Director Hu. Ah, Captain Ling. Have they arrived? Yes, they are en route. Understood. These three are the core of the Church of Almighty God. We have tried to get from them who the church leaders are and the whereabouts of its money. But they have stayed quiet. In particular, the leader, Zhang Mindao. Four years ago, we broke two of his ribs for proselytizing. He did not say a thing. When released, he resumed proselytizing. He gives us nothing. No matter how much, we torture him. <sighs> All we can do with someone like this is hand them over to you. Give them a good brainwashing. Hmm. This is our only solution. Almighty God, I don't know what the devil is up to. I pray that you enlighten and guide me, and help me see through Satan's tricks. Bear firm witness, and put Satan to shame. Out. Move. Move. Go. Move. Faster. Move. Newcomers? Yes, three. Chen Mingdao, 205. Move. Chu Sheng Guang, 207. Su Ju Sing, 209. In. You're Zhang Mingdao? Let me introduce us. His name is Ma Bing. I'm Bai Ming. We are both your coaches. While you're here, if you need anything, don't hesitate to ask. Come. Don't worry. This is not an interrogation. This is a course. Reform for Christians. We promise no torture is involved. The course will last two weeks. You will study and reform here. And at the end, as long as you sign a statement of repentance and a written promise to never again believe, in Almighty God, you can go home. If you don't reform, you will stay here and continue training. You fail again, you're thrown in jail. For life. Understood? Please settle down. We invite Director He Hongchang of the Paolong Municipal Legal Education Center right here to speak. My students, good day. More and more people seem to believe in God, which is a real challenge for atheism. This brings a crisis to our party and society. The reformation of Christians has become a high priority 
for our government. Therefore, the government has committed significant resources to set up thought education reform courses all over China. University professors and lecturers and pastors have been hired specifically to teach you Christians and to implement atheist education so that you may understand Marxism, Leninism, and study science to eradicate your theist thought and perspective, correcting your view of life and your values, and turning you into atheists who believe in the Communist Party, who walk with the Communist Party, and merge into the family of society under Communist leadership. Only this will bring you good futures. You should thank the party and government. You should happily accept our country's education and strive to return to society as soon as you can. I now proclaim the Pan Long City Thought Education Reform Course for Christians has officially begun. Here. Next, we invite Professor Sui Yong Lee of the Province Academy of Social Sciences. Welcome. Every student, please don't constantly be on guard. Listen and quickly reform. In the classroom, I am your teacher, but I am also your friend. You must seriously consider everything I explain. If you have any doubt, feel free to ask. I will use Marxist-Leninist atheism to help with questions and your doubts. And now, we will formally begin. Listen carefully. All of you believe in God. I believe in Marx and Lenin. I have researched various religious beliefs. Through my many years of research, I have discovered a problem. All religions believe in God. But for all believers in God, none have seen God. Their belief is based solely on feelings. I therefore have reached a conclusion about religious belief. Religion is purely imaginary. It is superstition with no basis in science. Hear that? In today's society, science is highly developed. Everything must be based on science to not make mistakes. The Communist Party believes in this. We don't believe in God. In the Internationale, there has never been any savior of the world, nor deities, nor emperors on which to depend. To create humankind's happiness, we must entirely depend on ourselves. The international states, there has never been any savior of the world. The reason that our ancestors believed in God is mainly because that at the time they were facing phenomena such as the sun, the moon, and the stars with no scientific explanation. Hence, fear and wonder arose in their minds about supernatural powers. Thus, the earliest concepts of religion were formed. Also, when humans could not solve such difficulties as natural disasters and disease, they sought spiritual comfort by paying respect to God. This is the origin of religion. We can see this was not rational or scientific. These days, we are more advanced. Science has come far. In such fields as the aerospace industry, biotechnology, genetic engineering, and medicine, the human race has made much progress. Before, they didn't understand and did not have a way to solve problems. 
But now, we can explain everything through science. And we rely on science for solutions. In this age of science and technology, to believe in God? Isn't it... ignorant? Don't you think you will be left behind? All we can believe in is science. Would you agree? Yes. 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 We must believe in science. Professor, I would like to discuss my perspective. May I? <laughs> very good, very good. You can share whatever it is you have to say. Zhang Mingdao, please speak. Professor, you say our belief is due to people not understanding science and comes from fear and wonder in the face of the supernatural and is superstition. This is incorrect and unfounded. Oh. Well, in that case, will you please enlighten us? Religion and the superstition of which you speak are different. You communists condemn and ban religious belief by calling it simply superstition. I think that's absurd. Of the main world religions, including Judaism, Catholicism, and Christianity, they all believe in God and the Lord Jesus. Only this is authentic religious belief. 3,000 years ago, the work of God during the Age of Law gave rise to Judaism. The Israelites heard the voice of God, knew His name. All along, they prayed to Jehovah God, obeying the commandments proclaimed by Jehovah. They all worship Jehovah God. We can ascertain that Judaism began because of the work of God during the Age of Law. When the Age of Grace arrived, God became incarnate as the Lord Jesus and began to work. He atoned for the human race when He was crucified. Many professed belief in Him, and the Church of the Lord Jesus was formed. After several hundred years, Christianity, Catholicism, and the Eastern Orthodox Church evolved. They are the largest religions in the world. All of them originated from the Lord Jesus' work of redemption. Almighty God of the last days has expressed truth and judged and has conquered and saved many people. People who truly believe have heard His voice and have come before God's throne. Thus the Church of Almighty God arrived. Amen. 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 Be quiet. These facts prove that religious belief was produced completely from God's appearance and work. God's appearance and work is verified by the life experiences of countless Christians. No force can topple or ban the Church of God or God's chosen people. This is fact. Since the beginning of history, God has been at work guiding human beings, redeeming us, and saving us. The appearance and work of God leads us all to move forward. These facts can't be denied by anyone. Professor, you specialize in research of religious belief. You should understand these things. Why would you distort historical facts, saying that religious belief is a product of ignorance? Aren't these statements rather absurd? Professor Tsui, you have studied religious belief for so many years, but there seems to be no positive result. You can't even distinguish superstition from religion. This shows you don't understand religion. Watch your mouth. These days, more and more believe in God. More than one-third of the world's population believes. Many of the world's greatest scientists have been Christians. Like Newton, Galileo, and Copernicus. Would you call these people superstitious? They didn't believe in science? Science produces results in research of the material world, but is powerless to explore the spiritual realm. Our belief in God is not based on science. Rather, our belief is based on the words and work of God. The Holy Bible is the witness of the work of God and is historical record of humanity's experience of God's work. Prophets in the Bible predicted thousands of years ago what would happen in the last days. 
These prophecies are coming true, which shows us God's appearance and work is real. Amen. And that it is God who rules the human race and the entire universe. This cannot be denied. Amen. Amen. Don't say that. Settle down. You claim God created and rules everything. I can't see this. Science has not verified it. I won't believe it. I only believe that everything is created by nature and evolution. As the saying goes, words are but wind. Seeing is believing. That which cannot be seen cannot exist. Let's consider believers in God. No matter how many people believe, who has seen God? To whom has God appeared? No one has seen God. This simply proves that God does not exist. If God does exist, why is it that scientists with all their instruments have not yet seen him? Can you explain this? If not, your belief in God is simply based on human imagination. It is like the saying, if you believe, it exists. If you don't, it doesn't. In my opinion, all belief is like this. Pro, professor. Let her. You claim if people can't see God, he does not exist. But when you burn imitation money and kowtow at graves, do you see the soul of the dead? In seeking evil spirits and psychics to tell fortunes, can you see the realm of departed spirits? If not, then why do you burn imitation money, kowtow, find a fortune teller? You say over and over that God doesn't exist and preach atheism on a large scale, but in private, you believe in fake gods and worship evil spirits. Aren't these actions spreading lies and deceiving your people? You plainly see that the words and work of the true God are truth, and they bring light and salvation to the human race. Yet you stubbornly deny and resist, and oppose belief of the true God in the name of atheism, wildly suppressing religious belief, and persecuting Christians. In the end, isn't this a problem? Professor Sway, can you explain this to us? God is spirit, though we cannot see his spiritual body. We can hear God speaking His words and can see the work of God. These facts are indisputable. For millennia, God has been speaking to us, guiding us, and saving us, and ruling all our fates. God also revealed many deeds. Experience and practical knowledge of these things gave rise to many proverbs, such as trust the will of heaven, man proposes, God disposes. Humans may sow the seed, but the harvest depends on heaven. Heaven always provides a way. Heaven's plans supersede our own. Man's fortune is written in the stars, etc. All this proves there is a ruler who manages and arranges our entire world, leading, blessing, and nurturing the human race. There are also the oft-heard sayings. There is a spirit watching right above your head. As people act, heaven watches. And what goes around, comes around. This all proves that God is Lord of creation, and that God has always ruled over all things. God keeps watch over all. God meets out retribution according to people's actions and decides our fate. Professor Sway, you have so much experience. Why do you not acknowledge these facts? Handome, are you finished yet? Professor. Sit. What is this? Professor, you say because no one sees him, God does not exist. This is incorrect. Have you sought after the work of God? Have you read the Holy Bible and the Word appears in the flesh? The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. Amen. Though humans have not seen God's Spirit, they can hear the voice of God, can see the words expressed by God, 
and can experience the actions of God. Amen. Amen. Over millennia, God has worked in three stages. In Israel, he did the work of the age of law, proclaiming his laws and commandments to the Israelites. In the age of grace, God incarnate did the work of redemption. The sins of many were forgiven through belief. They lived in God's presence and enjoyed his peace and happiness. In the age of kingdom, God has been incarnated again to express truth and perform judgment to purify and save. God has done a great many things. How can people not see this? How can people still claim that God does not exist? We don't merely rely on eyes for belief in God. Our belief is mainly based on the work of God. God incarnate has said very many words. God's words are different than people's words. No person could say them. God's words have authority and power. Every day they become fulfilled. Every stage of God's work saves many, bringing them to face God, allowing them to see He exists and know His disposition. For these reasons, more and more people turn toward God. How are you not able to see this reality? Professor Sway, if acceptable, I will share some of Almighty God's words. When you hear these words, you will better understand God's creation of and rule over everything. Zhang Mendao. Do you presume to spread the words of Almighty God here? Can you see what this place is? I urge you to listen closely to the teacher's lecture and accept the education and reform. Appreciate this favor. Well, don't worry. Captain, let our student finish what he was saying. Zhang Mingdao, speak and we will listen. It so happens that I want to learn what words Almighty God has said. Almighty God says, How many creatures are there living and reproducing in the vast expanse of the universe, following the law of life over and over, adhering to one constant rule? Those who die take with them the stories of the living, and those who are living repeat the same tragic history of those who have died. Yes. And so mankind can't help but ask itself, why do we live? And why do we have to die? Who is in command of this world? And who created this mankind? Was mankind really created by Mother Nature? Is mankind really in control of its own fate? Mankind does not know who is the sovereign of all things in the universe. Much less does he know the beginning and future of mankind. Mankind merely lives perforce amidst this law. None can escape it and none can change it. For among all things and in the heavens, there is but one from everlasting to everlasting who holds sovereignty over everything. He is the one who has never been beheld by man, the one whom mankind has never known, in whose existence mankind has never believed. Yet he is the one who breathed the breath into mankind's ancestors and gave life to mankind. He is the one who supplies and nourishes mankind for its existence and guides mankind up to the present day. Moreover, he and he alone is whom mankind depends on for its survival. He holds sovereignty over all things and rules all living beings beneath the universe. He commands the four seasons and it is he who calls forth wind, frost, snow, and rain. He gives mankind sunshine and brings the coming of night. It was he who laid out the heavens and earth, providing man with mountains, lakes, and rivers, and all the living things within them. Yes. His deed is everywhere. His power is everywhere. His wisdom is everywhere. And his authority is everywhere. Amen. Each of these laws and rules are the embodiment of his deed. Amen. And every one of them reveals his wisdom and authority. Who can exempt themselves from his sovereignty? And who can discharge themselves from his designs? 
All things exist beneath his gaze, and moreover, all things live beneath his sovereignty. His deed and his power leave mankind with no choice but to acknowledge the fact that he really does exist and hold sovereignty over all things. Professor, I would also like to share Almighty God's words. Almighty God says, Since the day man came into existence, God has been steady in his work, managing this universe, and directing the change and movement of all things. Like all things, man quietly and unknowingly receives the nourishment of the sweetness and rain and dew from God. Like all things, man unknowingly lives under the orchestration of God's hand. The heart and spirit of man are held in the hand of God, and all the life of man is beheld in the eyes of God, regardless of whether or not you believe this. Any and all things, living or dead, will shift, change, renew, and disappear according to God's thoughts. This is how God rules over all things. Amen. Amen. Almighty God also says, Though humanity does not admit that God exists, does not accept the fact that the Creator made and has dominion over everything, and moreover does not recognize the existence of the Creator's authority, human scientists, astronomers, and physicists are finding more and more that the existence of all things in the universe and the principles and patterns that dictate their movements are all governed and controlled by a vast and invisible dark energy. This fact compels man to face up to and acknowledge that there is a mighty one in the midst of these patterns of movement orchestrating everything. His power is extraordinary, and though no one can see his true face, he governs and controls everything at every moment. No man or force can go beyond his sovereignty. Amen. Faced with this fact, man must recognize that the laws governing the existence of all things cannot be controlled by humans, cannot be changed by anyone. And at the same time, man must admit that human beings cannot fully understand these laws and they are not naturally occurring, but are dictated by a Lord and Master. Enough! You are all impudent! There is no end to you speaking Almighty God's words. Did you know? Here we follow Marxism, Leninism, and Atheism. How can you be permitted to spread the gospel here? You must stay quiet. You may only listen to Professor Tsui's teaching, and may no longer speak. Not out of turn and not God's words. Captain, didn't Professor just say we should raise questions we might have? We are doing as he suggested. Are we wrong? In education and reform, can we not exchange points of view? If exchanging points of view is not allowed, how then will you brainwash us? That is rude! Hey, Captain! Hmm. You may raise questions. This is a rare opportunity to communicate. This will benefit your education and reform. Just now, you spoke very well. It sounded quite reasonable. But it doesn't agree with science and has not undergone scientific proof. Therefore, it is impossible to determine whether or not God exists. In your belief in God, you all have your own ideas and opinions. It seems to me that your ideas and theories are feelings of subjective consciousness and are all simply illusions. We communists believe materialism and the theory of evolution are truth because they agree with science. Our country provides relevant education from elementary school through university. 
Why is this? In order to imbue all children with atheist and evolutionist thinking from an early age. So they avoid religion and superstition. So they can explain all questions rationally. For example, consider life's origin. In the past, we were ignorant and believed in stories like separation of heaven and earth and Nua making humans. Westerners, they believe God created us all. In fact, this is all mythology and legend and are not in accord with science. Ever since the theory of evolution, that explained the origin of the human race. How humans evolved from apes. The legends of God creating man have been thoroughly invalidated. All things have evolved completely in nature. This is the truth. Therefore, we must believe in science and in evolution. You are all educated, knowledgeable people. How can you believe in God? I just can't understand it. Would you be able to share with us your views? Yes. <laughs> Professor Soy teaches well. He presents reasons for belief in science and evolution in a grounded way. Everyone, please express your point of view. Talk about your ideas. Speak out freely, not restrained. <laughs> then I will say more. Communist Party members believe in materialism and evolution, and you revere Marx and Darwin. Then why is it ever fewer people in the world believe in materialism and evolution? Of the human race, those that believe in God make up the majority. Of all those that believe, none believe in evolution. Even among non-believers, there are not many that buy into evolution. Do people these days believe in Darwin? Are there people who recognize evolution as truth? Maybe not as many as you think. Professor Sue, may I ask, does everyone that believes in evolution acknowledge that apes are their ancestors? In ceremonies for ancestors, do they pay respect to apes? Stop laughing. You aren't allowed to laugh. Settle down. If they don't pay respect to apes, but keep on repeating that evolution is true, they are not practicing what they preach. Stay still. Professor Sue, you worship science, base everything on science, and use science to explain everything. May I ask, is science the truth? How did science come into being? Why are so many scientific theories that are published later refuted by other scientists? Do you dare say that science is truth? I ask you, can science save us from corruption? Can science save the human race from Satan's power? Can science help people cast aside sin and live a life of significance? Can science bring about peace to the world? Can science bring us happiness and a glorious destination? Can science bring us safety and happiness? Can science predict the development and destination of the human race? It can't. Science can't do any of these things. How can you say that science is truth? In the end, what is truth? Can you say for sure? Professor, because you hold science in such high regard, would you please explain to us, what exactly is science? Science is a few theories that only exist in the realm of knowledge, researched by corrupt humans when faced with the world that God made. It is produced completely from the minds of people. Corrupt humans do not possess truth. Science comes from the humans. How do you explain that scientific knowledge is truth? Truth can only come from God. 
Only God is the Creator. Only the words expressed by the Creator are truth. Ever since God appeared, worked, and expressed many words, men have experienced His words. They have recognized that only God's words are truth. They are an unchanging fact. We will have to try harder on Han Dong Mei. In the age of law, God proclaimed many things, leading humans to obey the laws of God, thereby obtaining God's caring protection and blessing. Those who transgressed the laws were declared guilty and cursed. In the age of grace, the Lord Jesus was crucified for the sins of mankind, and He redeemed us all. By believing in Him, people's sins were pardoned, and they could enjoy the grace and blessing of God. With the arrival of the Age of Kingdom, Almighty God has appeared and done work, expressing truth to judge and purify us all, thoroughly saving the human race from Satan's power, causing people to find God and gain God's blessing, bestowing upon them a wonderful destination. Amen. The facts of God's work are enough to show that the words of God are truth and that what they bring to us is light, blessing, and salvation. For millennia, God has used words to lead the human race, to guide us to where we are today. God uses words to accomplish all. Every one of God's words is coming true. These are facts that anyone can see. The Lord Jesus said, For truly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass, one stroke or one pronunciation mark shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen. The last days have arrived, and many Christians have seen that the prophecies of Lord Jesus have come true. This goes to show that only the words of God are truth, positive things. These are facts that nobody can deny. Only God can save the human race. Only the words of God are truth and can be the life of humans. Science is not the truth. Students, for me, I don't know what truth is. I don't understand science. But I do know that if not for science, we would not have the superior, comfortable life that we have now. Aren't all the results of science that people enjoy today brought about by science. Only through science can all the diseases that people have these days be safely cured. All of people's problems await solutions from science. Isn't this what you would call truth? You believe in God and say the words of God are truth. I can't believe that. I only know that without science, the human race would not have progressed. We would be without lights. We would be in darkness. Maybe your belief means that God can solve all your problems. Can he cause you to lead happy lives? If we only believed in God and not science, could society advance? It seems to me that you believers don't know reality. Can God save you from all the misery of the Communist Party's persecution? Can God destroy the Communist Party? These are simply facts. How can you explain them? Hmm. Director He is right. Without scientific development, humans would be ignorant, barbaric, stupid, and backward. Many years ago, we did not understand how to use many of nature's resources. Now that science has developed, we have extracted coal, petroleum, natural gas, and developed nuclear power. This has advanced society and the economy in big ways and has improved our quality of life. Right. Believe in science. That's right. Listen, our population grows daily and supply of food diminishes. 
With technology, pesticide and chemicals, crop output has greatly increased. Now we can help the people be well fed and dressed. Can these problems be solved through belief in God? Aren't they simply results from science? We should, therefore, have belief in science. You see, only science can make a difference and change this world. It could even help control the world. By relying on science, we are able to build happy lives for ourselves and build a glorious homeland. We don't need God. But science? We need it to work. Now what I say, is it wrong? Without God? Director Pang, you believe in science and think science can help us develop and make us happy. Is this reality? Science has been developing, but what has it actually achieved? From the outside, it appears that science has brought positive results. Standard of living appears to have risen. Society looks like it's thriving. In reality, science has brought us to a crisis of belief. As we distance, deny, and betray God. Because of people believing in science, many people don't find God. Instead, they seek physical pleasures. Following this trend, humanity's morals have declined, becoming more and more wicked. The souls of people are ever more empty. People seek excitement and follow lust. Drug addiction and suicide have risen. These are just facts. In the time we have developed science, we have damaged our environment, polluting air, water, and even soil and our food. This has caused us a great deal of harm. Many countries are engaged in arms races, racking their brains to make sophisticated weapons. Science has made nuclear weapons and guided missiles, making us all face the danger of destruction. If World War III begins, it will bring about calamity to the human race. You could say, the day science reaches its peak will be the end of us. Director, listen to words of Almighty God. Maybe you will understand whether science has brought blessing or disaster to the human race. Almighty God says, from when man first had social sciences, the mind of man was occupied by science and knowledge. Then science and knowledge became tools for the ruling of mankind. And there was no longer sufficient room for man to worship God. And no more favorable conditions for the worship of God. The position of God sunk ever lower in the heart of man. A world in man's heart with no place for God is dark, empty, without hope. Science, knowledge, freedom, democracy, leisure, comfort. These are but a temporary respite. Even with these things, man will inevitably sin and bemoan the injustices of society. These things cannot allay man's craving and desire to explore. Because man was made by God, and the senseless sacrifices and explorations of man can only lead to more distress. Man will exist in a constant state of fear, will not know how to face the future of mankind, or how to face the path that lies ahead. Man will even come to fear science and knowledge, and fear even more the feeling of emptiness within him. If the people of a country or a nation are unable to receive the salvation and care of God, then such a country or nation will tread the road to ruin, toward darkness, and shall be annihilated by God. These believers in Almighty God, they can all recite Almighty God's words. Yes. Hey, look, another stands. Almighty God also says, 
They continually carry out scientific exploration and in-depth research. Then ceaselessly, they satisfy their own material needs and lusts. What then are the consequences for man? First of all, there is no longer any ecological balance. And hand in hand with this, mankind's bodies have been tainted and damaged by this kind of environment. And various infectious diseases, plagues, and haze spread everywhere. This is a situation that man now has no control over. Is that not right? Now that you understand this. If mankind does not follow God, but always follow Satan this way, using knowledge to continually enrich themselves, using science to ceaselessly explore the future of human life, using this kind of method to continue living, are you able to recognize what the natural end of mankind will be? What will be the natural final result? It will be ruination. Approaching ruination one step at a time. Approaching ruination one step at a time. All that Almighty God says is fact and truth. Isn't what this has described simply a consequence of the human race developing science? The corrupt human race worships science. This is dangerous. Developing science has brought calamity and destruction to us all. Professor, God is the Creator. Only God can save us. Almighty God of the last days expresses truth and judges us to purify and save a corrupt human race. Almighty God says, my final work is not only for the sake of punishing man, but also for the sake of arranging the destination of man. Even more, it is for the sake of receiving acknowledgement from all for everything that I have done. I want each and every man to see that all I have done is right, and that all I have done is an expression of my disposition. It is not man's doing, least of all nature, that brought forth mankind. On the contrary, it is I who nourish every living being in creation. Amen. Without my existence, mankind will only perish and undergo the scourge of calamities. No human being will ever again see the beauteous sun and moon or the green world. Mankind shall encounter only the frigid night and the inexorable valley of the shadow of death. I am mankind's only salvation. I am mankind's only hope. And even more, I am he on whom the existence of all mankind rests. Amen. Without me, mankind will immediately come to a complete standstill. Without me, mankind will suffer catastrophe and be trodden down by all manner of ghosts. Yes. The disaster originates with me and is, of course, orchestrated by me. If you cannot appear as good in my eyes, then you will not escape suffering the disaster. Only by submitting to God's judgment in the last days, accepting the truth expressed by Christ, can one's corruption be purified and can one submit to and worship God. Only like this can one be saved from disasters by God's protection and arrive in God's Enough. kingdom. This has gone too far. No matter how much power, the words of Almighty God have. We won't believe it! Do you not see where you are? This is a training course put on by the Communist Party. A stronghold for Marxism-Leninism. Of atheism! You dare to preach the gospel and bear witness to God here? Show some respect! You people are unbelievably stubborn. From now on, you cannot share your view. And no mention of God. Understood? Uh, you may ask questions after class. In private. Now let us continue. Damn!
I'm angry about today. What started as brainwashing became them preaching to us. They even quoted Almighty God's words to refute us, thinking it's justification. Listening works me up. That we're trying to change them. Stop me from beating them all! Marxist-Leninist atheism and science are things that are of no use to them. Torture is all I can do. Captain Hua, you have had a taste of the difficulties of brainwashing. If someone has believed in God for 10 years, they're dedicated. Change will be slow. Converting them is going to be a formidable task. This is war. A war between beliefs, two different ways. It's also a battle to win people over. Only one will win. Staying calm is the key. Our goal here is ideological transformation. Torture is out of the question. If we lose our patience, and if we create an antagonizing atmosphere, it'll undermine everything we've done. If torture was effective at getting them to renounce their faith and give us insider knowledge, would the government then invest so many resources on these training courses? Director He is right. Converting people is no easy task. It's a battle between two opposing ideologies. One will win and one will lose. Torture can change them on the outside, but it's unlikely to actually change how they think. We must understand the intention of central leadership. In order to exterminate the Church of Almighty God, we need to utilize psychological tactics in addition to torture for those who believe in Almighty God. Yes. And transform them through brainwashing using both a light touch and a heavy fist. This is our best chance of success. Dig down deep. That sounds logical. But transforming people who have believed in Almighty God for so long, it's not so simple. The Holy Book, the Word appears in the flesh, they claim was written by Almighty God, and they read it every day. They peer deeply into the world and human life. They scrutinize society and science. Their words are thoughtful, have insight, and are irrefutable. In fact, Almighty God's words are so powerful. And the words have taken root in these people. Look, it's not going to be easy because you're asking them to deny God and betray God. It is difficult to reform people who believe in Almighty God. However, they're locked up in a Reformation class. Without the word appears in the flesh, as long as we're relentless, exhibiting atheism and educating them, maintaining the mental assault on them, we'll be able to slowly destroy their faith. Bit by bit, erasing the very words of Almighty God from their hearts ultimately causing them to abandon their faith and speak up. Professor Tsui, is there anything you'd like to add? I feel that we cannot excessively restrict their speaking. We must permit them to speak out freely. Only like this, will their opinions be revealed and will allow us to have a goal and seize their errors. Then we counterattack and break down their attitudes. If we merely narrate Marxist-Leninist atheism and the theory of evolution to these people, they will not listen to it. Like this, we will not penetrate the fortresses of their hearts and break down their faith and it'll be difficult to effectively convert them. Hmm. Honestly, 
you're right. It's no wonder you're a professor. It won't suffice not to have a strategy for brainwashing Christians. Mr. Wong, what was your recommendation? There's another issue. We need to keep an eye on the students. They cannot pray or interact. If we give them their normal routine, it'll disrupt the conversion process and they'll know how to talk back. Then our work will have been in vain. Yes, we monitor them. This is also crucial. While this is a battle without gunsmoke to reform Almighty God's followers, it's a formidable political move. We need to keep all of this in mind 24-7. Professor Tsui, of all of Mao Tse Tung's quotes, do you want to know my favorite? To battle with heaven is great fun. To battle with earth is great fun. To battle with people is great fun. <laughs> it gets right to the point. It's great fun. <laughs> Communists should struggle with heaven and God. Right now, we must get these believers in Almighty God to surrender. They surrender, we win. When it is their own words that betray God and speak against Him, <laughs> then our victory will be complete. I don't believe Marxist-Leninist atheism can be defeated by theism. This can't happen. Everyone ramp up the effort and turn believers in Almighty God immediately. We will. So I may ask for a reward on your behalf. <laughs> Practical labor played a pivotal role in the evolutionary development of humans. It allowed the ape's brain to expand into one capable of abstract thought. Don't stop. Keep reading. Are you praying? Praying is not allowed. Zhong Mingdao, study hard and reform quickly. This way you will go home sooner. Your family is looking forward to seeing you. Played a pivotal role in the evolutionary development of humans. It allowed the ape's brain to expand into one capable of abstract thought. Watching patriotic films is a field of study. Keep watching. After you can write about what you've learned. Why'd you close the door? It stays open. Can I lie down? Sure. Start writing. No sleep until you've written what you've learned.
Almighty God. Every day, they attempt to brainwash me with the words of Satan. Their fallacies make me feel nauseous. When I hear them, I want to vomit. These people really are devils. The way they use the words of Satan is unsettling to my heart and mind. I despise Satan through and through. God, I pray that you stay by my side and protect me. You have all just seen a legal education movie on what cults are. The central government has given us this definition and present us with five main characteristics. Discussing these characteristics, however, is challenging. They are a bit difficult to understand. I will try to explain them plainly and thoroughly. National leaders have labeled Christianity and Catholicism as cults and labeled the Holy Bible as a cult book. These are generally acknowledged facts. As for why the central government has labeled Christian house churches, and in particular, the Church of Almighty God cults, my research leads me to believe it is like this. All who testify that God created everything, who testify that God is the creator and created mankind, who testify that God rules over all and testify that God controls and is Lord of the universe and would have us revere God and worship God. All of these are cults. All who testify that God is righteous and holy, who bear witness to God's love and salvation, condemn Satan as an evil ruling force, corrupting the human race especially who attack and condemn the Communist Party. All these are cults. All who testify that the Lord Jesus has returned, who bear witness for Christ incarnate, and talk about the work of an ordinary human, as if it were the work of their Savior, and also publicize and testify that all words from Christ are the absolute truth, calling upon people to accept God, turn to Him, submit to Him, over and above the Communist Party, these are cults. All who testify that God's Word is truth above all, who testify that the Holy Bible is God's Word, and that the Word appears in the flesh is truth, and condemn Marxism-Leninism, the ideology of the Communist Party, these are cults. All who bear witness for Christ of the last days, preaching that God has returned, letting all mankind to accept God's salvation, who call upon people to follow God as the only way into the kingdom of heaven, these are cults. To my knowledge, this is why the government labels all Christian churches, the Church of Almighty God, in particular as cults. Do all of you understand what a cult is now? In China, the Communist Party is in control. The Communist Party is a Marxist-Leninist atheist party that opposes all theism. The Communist Party declares all groups that believe in God guilty as cults. This demonstrates their absolute authority. Only the Communist Party is great, glorious, and correct. Anything that goes against Marxism, Leninism, is wrong. The Communist Party wants to ban all this. In China, you must see the Communist Party as great. Is there anything wrong with this? Whatever it is, your views are. I want you to speak freely. Discuss it. You're listening? Watch what you say. Director Pang explained the characteristics of cults very clearly. Everyone should have understood. But I will also say, Your church claims that Jesus has returned as Almighty God and is Christ of the last days. You also claim that Almighty God expresses truth to purify and save people and the kingdom of heaven has arrived. This has caused religious circles to divide and millions turn toward Almighty God. 
This has impacted China and has brought unrest to society. You are disturbing public order. Listen. The government declares the Church of Almighty God to be a cult and cracks down on it. You have all been deceived, gone astray. Ideally, you will repent quickly. Leave the Church of Almighty God for the Three Self Church. So then, you will not be criminally responsible. How does this sound? Say how you feel. Take him what he says. This is for your benefit. Director Pan, Mr. Wong, you have explained how the Communist Party labels things cults. But I feel the condemnation by the government is unjustified. In the end, what is righteous and what is evil must be based on whether it's in line with truth and whether the words of God are followed. First of all, we should know that only the one true God who created all things is the truth. God is the Most High, and we all must worship Him. Amen. amen. Don't say amen. There are sayings like, there is a spirit watching above you. Humans act and heaven watches. Heaven's will cannot be violated. Justice is in man's heart. Good begets good. Evil begets evil. No prayer can save offense of heaven. All of these prove God is the ruler of all things Amen. and observes all. God is truth, and all positive things come from God. Laws and moral standards in society all come from God's work and words. Amen. Ever since creation, God has expressed truth, guiding us, redeeming us, and saving us. God is therefore man's great redeemer. Our belief, submission, and worship of God, following God, all these are good things and are correct path and are blessed by God. On the other hand, all things negative and evil come from Satan. All that denies, resists, and is hostile towards God, these are evil things. So now, what is a cult? You could say, all that goes against God all that opposes truths God expressed, all that denies, resists, or condemns God, and leads us into darkness, causing us to be distant from God, and become wicked as we fall into evil, leading God to express His wrath. This kind of evil is what a cult is. Since the CCP came to power, it has spread atheism and evolution to deceive and corrupt all of us and has caused us to deny God, resist God, and betray God, thereby offending the disposition of God, meeting the curses of God. In resisting God, the CCP has brought about calamity. The people constantly suffer in pain, and many flee abroad. For too many years now, the Chinese Communist Party has opposed God and has caused so much evil, more than we could ever measure. The only real cult is the CCP. In saying that Christian churches are cults, the CCP are simply distorting the facts. John Mingdao, you dare refute our words? And you dare say our party is a cult? You have some nerve. Director, Mr. Wong, the principles used as a basis in order to distinguish a cult. This really requires deep thought. For thousands of years, Satan has spread heresies and fallacies to corrupt the human race, causing us to deny, resist, and betray God. This makes our world to be more dark, evil, and chaotic. Since the Communist Party has come to power, it has been preaching atheism and evolution saying things like, this world has no God, and there's never been a savior, and I'm my own Lord on heaven and earth. Man can conquer nature and fight heaven and earth, as well as the saying, destiny is in your own hands, and every man for himself, 
and money makes the world go round, and other similar heresies that corrupt the Chinese people, causing us to be more arrogant and conceited, self-centered, greedy, and wicked. People's conscience and humanity have disappeared. Like foul devils, there is no evil people won't do, even commit murder. In China, the most evil place in the world, where the great red dragon lies, God has appeared and expressed truth to purify and save the human race, helping us escape the darkness of Satan's power to turn towards God and turn to light. These, in fact, are very good things. However, they are met with condemnation, suppression, and persecution. In doing so, isn't the CCP acting against heaven? People with a conscience acknowledge that belief in God is right, and that only God's work and God's truth can save the human race. Therefore, the one true way is the one that expresses truth and saves us. All that deceives us, corrupts us, and causes us to walk a path of darkness, that is an evil cult. These are the things that separate the right path from a cult. If a church that receives the work of God and accepts truth is labeled a cult, this distorts the truth, which is unacceptable. Yes. 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 Only God is the way, the truth, and the life. Only God's appearance and work can bring truth and light to us and can save us from sin and Satan's influence and bring us to a glorious destination. Nothing is more evil than when a church follows God, but is labeled a cult. It is only the Communist Party that would do such evil. True. True. Every stage of God's work is to save the human race. In the Age of Grace, God was incarnated for the first time as the Lord Jesus. On the outside, He appeared ordinary. But Lord Jesus expressed truth to redeem the human race. In his sacrifice, he saved us from sin, and he let us be free of condemnation, allowing us to live in God's grace. Amen. At the time, Judaism colluded with the ruling power and tried to convict the Lord Jesus. They crucified him. They believed that this would put an end to his work, which was their goal. But what happened? Today, the gospel of Lord Jesus has spread all around the world. Millions have received God's blessing. Religions have acknowledged Lord Jesus is Christ and Savior. The church that grew from the work of Lord Jesus is the true way, is accepted. Amen. Amen. Only the atheist communist party condemns Christian churches as cults and condemns the Holy Bible as a cult book. Aren't these facts? Yes. yes. Director Pan, Mr. Wong, that the CCP condemns the Lord Jesus and calls Christianity a cult isn't a surprise. The CCP is a satanic regime that hates both truth and God. In particular, it hates when God appears and does work. This is because of its satanic nature. In the last days, Lord Jesus has returned as none other than Almighty God, who expresses truth and judges in order to purify and save us, and bring us into God's kingdom, saving us from darkness and evil. Amen. The fact that God appeared and worked is enough to prove at every stage of His work He leads the human race to develop, Amen. and that all of God's truths guide the human race toward the light. Without the words and work of God, the human race would make no progress and would sink deeper and deeper into sin. If there are those who declare God's work as the work of a cult, what problem is this? This is something we have to reflect on and consider. These days, people from various sects and factions who love to seek truth have read the words of Almighty God, and they agree they are the voice of God. Almighty God is the Savior of the last days. The words of Almighty God are the truth. 
and have already been witnessed and spread by many people. Why does the Communist Party insist on doing everything it can to condemn the work and churches of God? Why is it that the more it is God's work, the more something is the truth, the more positive something is, the more the Communist Party attacks and condemns it? Isn't this going against heaven and very irrational? Now, we can all clearly see any organization that hates truth, denies, and is hostile towards God is the real cult. Anything that fabricates rumors and fallacies to corrupt and deceive the human race is a cult. Anything that suppresses and condemns the Christian church and is hostile to Christ is a cult. Anything that denies Christ, that denies and opposes truth, or is hostile towards Christ is a cult. The Communist Party denies God the most, resists Him the most, hates truth the most, and hates Christ the most. Therefore, the Communist Party is a genuinely evil cult. This is how I see it. Thank you. Director Hua, these people who believe in Almighty God are remarkable. They have their own opinions on what cults really are, and they just go on about it. Hard to argue back. You claim that Almighty God is the appearance of God during the last days. The truth. You also claim God created this world and rules over it. That God has been humanity's sole savior throughout history. Tell me, what factual basis do you have? The Communist Party. We are atheists. We don't recognize God's rule or His existence in the slightest. Even less do we recognize the incarnate God you believe in, the Jesus in whom Christians believe is clearly a man. He had parents and siblings. Christianity, however, insists He be worshipped as the one true God. Complete nonsense. Almighty God is just another Jesus, a normal person like you or me. Ah, what led you to believe that he is God incarnate? And why must you bear witness to him as Christ Savior of the last days in person? It's so foolish and ignorant. It's all fiction. There is no God. And moreover, there's no God incarnate. I reiterate, you claim that God has now taken the form of an ordinary human being. Where's your proof? Is there anyone who can tell me? How about you? Over there. Hmm? I'd like to speak. God is a spirit who you can't see or touch. But the spirit of God is part of our lives and can be heard by those who listen. This is true. From the facts recorded in the Bible, we can see that much. He can speak to us through thunder. He can speak to us through a raging fire. He can be incarnated as a person to speak to us directly. These are facts that no one can deny. God has guided man for thousands of years. Through the age of law, the age of grace, and the age of kingdom. Throughout all of these stages, God has communicated with us. During the age of grace, God was incarnated as the Lord Jesus to speak truth and was nailed to the cross for man's sins doing the work of redemption. Right. Be quiet. During the Age of Kingdom, God has become incarnate again as Almighty God, Amen. has spoken the truth to do the judgment work, has come to purify man and take us into a good destination. Amen. Thereafter, the Age of Evil and Darkness will come to an end. Every word that God spoke during both of His incarnations has allowed us to hear His voice and to see His work one by one, they've turned toward him. Henceforth, the human race has understood his omnipotence, wisdom, his righteous disposition, and seen his words accomplish everything. This is the most obvious outcome achieved by the work of God incarnate. Right. None of this could have been accomplished by any humans. Because we as people do not possess truth, let alone the truth needed to save our own kind. Regardless of the method in which God works or speaks, regardless of how great His work, how many turn to Him, 
those that work against God will try their best to condemn His appearance. They also find reasons to deceive people, causing denial and suspicion of God. The CCP will try to deny and condemn Christ, and calls Lord Jesus and Almighty God just ordinary people. This is due to the demonic essence of the Communist Party that hates truth and resists God. The Communist Party is an atheist party that would deny God's existence even in heaven. How would it ever recognize an incarnate God? Am I correct? Director Pan, I'll tell you that the existence of God incarnate is plainly evident given his ability to express the truth in every case. He does the work of God himself. He might seem like a regular person on the outside, but he's the flesh of God's spirit. Everything he does is an expression of God's spirit. He can redeem and save man. He can open up new eras, bring others to an end, and ultimately bring us into his kingdom, without a doubt. The work of the incarnate Christ is that of God himself. Christ is God's manifestation. Amen. Amen. Just like Lord Jesus, though on the outside he may seem like an ordinary person, he taught us, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he did indeed redeem us. He performed numerous miracles. He fed thousands with only five loaves and two fish. With a single utterance, he calmed the wind and sea. He raised a man from the dead. The list goes on. The truth he spoke and the miracles he performed could not have been done by any ordinary man. This makes God's power more than evident. It certainly proves that the Lord Jesus was God incarnate and that he was our redemption. The leaders of Judaism at the time, they were familiar with the work of the Lord Jesus and they knew he possessed power unattainable by any human. And yet they condemned the Lord Jesus, saying that he was a human that he was speaking blasphemy and cast out demons with the demon ruler. They deceived people, causing them to deny the Lord Jesus. Their satanic nature is clear, a resistance to God and a hatred of truth. At the moment, religious circles generally acknowledge that the Lord Jesus was Christ, God incarnate. Only devils belonging to Satan deny and condemn him. The Communist Party tries its best to do the same, calls the incarnate Christ an ordinary person, labels Christian churches as cults, outright suppressing and banning them. Doesn't this make the Chinese Communist Party evil? Are they not satanic, godless demons? Yeah. I'm warning you. If anyone dares bear witness for Christ of the last days again, going against Marxism, Leninism, atheism, they'll be locked up immediately. Don't say another word. Leave it. Are you crazy? It is all right for you to express your viewpoints. But whatever you say, I still think that the one in whom you believe is a human being. In believing in such an ordinary person, what are you ultimately hoping to gain? Let me hear your thoughts. Director, God's incarnation as Christ serves mainly to speak truth and bring man salvation. You do not acknowledge that the words of Christ are the truth. Of course you would deny him and even condemn him. Only those who acknowledge and submit to Christ will attain truth and salvation from God. Almighty God of the last days has expressed purifying truths that can save the human race. Almighty God is no different than the Lord Jesus. He might appear ordinary on the outside, yet he is really the Spirit of God in human form. Indeed. In essence, he is God. He can speak the truth and do the work that God himself would do. Almighty God has revealed the truth of man's corruption, has explained in a clear manner how Satan has corrupted the human race and has even told us what God requires of man, the truth they ought to have. Almighty God is leading us down a bright path, asking us to be honest and live by His Word, God's Word. Only like this can God's blessing be attained. Amen. After we accepted Almighty God, experienced His work, 
and came to understand so many truths, casting aside much unrighteousness and shedding much wickedness. We have all experienced varying degrees of purification. We've been given a foundation for how we should live and what to strive for in life. This is the effect the words of Almighty God have had on us. Amen. This proves that the words of Almighty God are absolute truth, capable of purifying and saving the human race. They cause people to stop their satanic ways and elude Satan's influence, and can bring them a wonderful destination. Tell me, aside from God, who could accomplish this? Who else could solve the root cause of our sinning and save us from the fetters of sin? Who else could bring us into a good destination? Other than God Himself, there is no one who possesses such power. Other than the incarnate Christ, there is no person who can express truth. This is a fact. Amen. The truths revealed by Almighty God are proof that Almighty God is God incarnate. Almighty God is God revealing Himself as the Savior Christ of the last days. Director Pong, Mr. Wong. You're so determined to deny the incarnate God, like you are now. But have you ever read the words of Almighty God? Have you ever even investigated Almighty God's work? If you haven't, I recommend you best not deny Christ like you do, even less declare Him guilty. If you'd allow me, I'd like to read a few passages written by Almighty God. Almighty God says, he who is God's incarnation shall hold the substance of God, and he who is God's incarnation shall hold the expression of God. Since God becomes flesh, he shall bring forth the work he must do. And since God becomes flesh, he shall express what he is, and shall be able to bring the truth to man, bestow life upon man, and show man the way. Flesh that does not contain the substance of God is surely not the incarnate God. Of this there is no doubt. Amen. To investigate whether it is God's incarnate flesh, man must determine this from the disposition he expresses and the words he speaks. Which is to say, whether or not it is God's incarnate flesh, and whether or not it is the true way, must be judged from his substance. And so, in determining whether it is the flesh of God incarnate, the key is to pay attention to his substance, his work, his words, his disposition, and many more, rather than external appearance. Amen. Christ comes during the last days so that all those who truly believe in him may be provided with life. His work is for the sake of concluding the old age and entering the new one. And this is the path that must be taken by all those who would enter the new age. If you are incapable of acknowledging him and instead condemn, blaspheme, or even persecute him, then you are bound to burn for eternity and shall never enter the kingdom of God. For this Christ is himself, the expression of the Holy Spirit, the expression of God, the one whom God has entrusted to do his work on earth. And so I say that if you cannot accept all that is done by Christ of the last days, then you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. The retribution that should be suffered by those who blaspheme the Holy Spirit is self-evident to all. I also tell you that if you oppose Christ of the last days and deny him, then there is no one who can bear the consequences on your behalf. Furthermore, from this day onward, you will not have another chance to gain the approval of God. Even if you try to redeem yourself, you will never again behold the face of God. For what you oppose is not a man, what you deny is not some puny being, but Christ. Are you aware of this consequence? You have not made a small mistake, but committed a heinous crime. And so I advise everyone not to bear your fangs before the truth or make careless criticisms. For only the truth can bring you life, and nothing except the truth can allow you to be reborn and behold the face of God. Amen. Amen. The words of Almighty God explain Christ's substance very clearly. 
We who believe have read a great deal of the words of Almighty God. This is why we're able to understand the truth and the last day's work of Almighty God. Without an understanding of truth, it's easy to misunderstand the work of God and even condemn it. The pursuit of truth and a knowledge of the words of Almighty God will assure that you say nothing against God. Director Pan, Mr. Wong, we hope that you'll think twice before denying God or God incarnate for that matter, lest you offend him. Director Hua, having observed these people for a few days now, the ones who believe in Almighty God, they're not as simple as we thought they were. That book they mentioned, the word appears in the flesh. It converted them and I fear there's little hope for reformation. Our theories may not be able to refute theirs. Hmm. I don't believe we can't reform them. Faith, it's all vague. Materialism is the only real, practical thing. Are you saying that our great Marxist, Leninist atheism cannot refute their theism? They've believed in God for a few years. They can't all be so far gone. The Mid-Autumn Festival is coming up in a few days. I'm sure you're homesick and miss your children very much. We too hope you'll be able to go soon, to be with your family again. Today, we're going to have a little talk, a heart-to-heart, -heart, okay? You claim that Almighty God is God of the last days here on Earth. And you say that you want to seek the truth, the correct path in life. From my experience, however, many of Almighty God's followers are like missionaries of Jesus, spreading gospel, bearing witness to God, abandoning their families and careers, giving their body and soul to God. Among them, there are many young people who choose not to marry, in exchange for following Christ of the last days. This is all true, isn't it? Because of you leaving everything behind to spread the gospel, more and more people believe in God. If, say, everyone in the world turned to God, who would still follow the party and believe in the party? This is why the government suppresses and arrests believers. Do you see a problem with this? It's due to the nature of your belief that so many have been arrested and sent to prison. So many have fled their homes. So many couples have divorced. And so many children are left without parents. So many elders with no one to care for them. The very nature of your belief is causing your own families to suffer. What are you trying to achieve? Is this the right path you mentioned, you've been led down? Traditional Chinese culture revolves around filial piety. The saying goes, filial piety above all else. Confucius said, when your parents are alive, don't travel far away. Respect for your parents is the foundation of human conduct. Following God the way that you do, not caring for the very people who gave you life and nurtured you, how can this be the correct path to follow? I often hear people state that believers are the best people. This is not false. But all of you who worship God and hold Him above all else, this infuriates the Communist Party. It fills them with hate. You go around spreading the gospel, yet you can't even care for your own family. How could this be good conduct? Couldn't it be? that your faith leads you down a wrong turn, along your path? By doing what you're doing, aren't you destroying the harmony and balance in our society? I advise you, don't persist in error. You should leave this place, return to your homes, reunite with your families, take care of them, live a normal life. It's your duty as children and as parents. These are what humans should do, 
It's only practical. You'd agree, wouldn't you? Yes. You know, your family, they're all waiting for you. Don't keep them waiting. Listen to her. The sooner you can reform, the sooner you can go. Why waste any more time here? Miss Den. You keep saying we've gone wrong, somewhere down the line, abandoning our families and careers, to follow God. You're completely wrong. You're an atheist. Tell me, what course should humanity follow? Can you tell me? Can you see where all the darkness, where the evil in the world comes from? Can you see why we human beings dwell in sin? And why we struggle? Do you think relishing the joy of sin is happiness? Now, God incarnate has come to rid us people of sin and lead us into the light and a good destination. This is wonderful news for corrupt mankind. Indeed. Indeed. Every one of us has been corrupted by Satan. We should accept the work of God and accept all truth He speaks. This is the only way we can attain purity and find our salvation. This is the path we humans were meant to follow. How can you tell me that that's wrong? From your point of view, the disciples of the Lord Jesus abandoned their families to follow the Lord and that this is the wrong path. The Western missionaries who left their loved ones to travel to China devoted their lives to bearing witness for the salvation of the Lord Jesus, some of them even losing their lives for it. And you claim that they were ruthless? They were carrying out God's will in order to help us attain salvation. They were benevolent. It was the most righteous cause of all in keeping with God's will. The Lord Jesus said, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And he that takes not his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. For 2,000 years, Christians have left their families and careers, dedicating their lives to following God and spreading the gospel. It was their selfless effort that allowed the Lord's salvation to be known in all corners of the world. Today, the Lord Jesus has returned as Almighty God. He's spoken the truth to do the judgment work of purifying and saving man in the last days. The Christians of the Church of Almighty God, in order to make more people hear the Word of God, accept His purification and salvation of the last days, and enter the good destination. They leave behind everything they held dear and dedicate everything to bearing witness for Savior Christ of the last days. And you think we're misled? This is in line with the Bible, in line with God's will. It is. Sure, you're leaving your lives behind to spread the gospel and help people attain salvation. But that still doesn't change the fact. No matter how many people you convert or souls you save, in the end, you've still caused your family to crumble at your feet. Is that really worth your while? I think it would be best if you cooperated with the government by accepting their reform and education. Try to finish this class soon and live normally. It's the most practical solution. In the future, don't spread the gospel. So there won't be any more like you who believe. Tearing families apart, separating child from parent, what do you say? Miss Den, Miss Liu, 
You say, many Christian families fall apart because believers put aside family to spread the gospel. Is this really true? Everyone knows that since the CCP came to power, they have persecuted religious belief, labeled Christianity a cult, and labeled the Holy Bible a cult book. They arrest and persecute believers of God, putting countless Christians into jail, while many Christians are maimed and killed. Who is really destroying families? Who is it that renders Christians unable to return home, breaking up family members from each other? Isn't this whole tragedy being caused by the Communist Party persecuting Christians? That's correct. When Christians in democratic Western countries put aside family and career to follow God, why is it that their families remain intact? What's going on here? Tell me, why is it that in China, where the Communist Party rules, Believing in God is such a crime. What country has laws like this? What kind of ruler are they? I once had a wonderful family. The communist police, when they learned of my faith, they hunted me down. All I could do was run away. They even went after my family. Not only did they monitor our home and wiretap our telephone, they went to my daughter's school to stake up for my arrest. Saying that, I was a political criminal. As a result, the teachers and students discriminated my daughter. And she was forced out of school. She was only 14 years old. I thought of her always. I missed my parents, but I didn't dare try and call them. I passed my hometown so many times. But all I could do was look from afar. I wouldn't dare go back. It sounds like I had a choice, but in fact, I wasn't even allowed. My husband, because of my arrest warrant, his career was impacted. And he eventually divorced me. My family was torn to pieces. And who's to blame for that? My family has no one to care for them. So who is the criminal here? Isn't it the Chinese Communist government? They will do anything in their power to persecute believers, stripping away our right to even exist. And then they go after our families. Heaven's law won't tolerate this. The path we walk is perfectly right. So why then? Why do they do this to us? Abuse us? Is this what they call their greatness, glory, and rectitude? The Communist Party chooses to arrest believers they can find, splitting up countless Christian households and then, they have the gall to claim we did this to ourselves and tell everyone, our belief is the cause of all these problems. That Christians disrupt public order. The Communist Party is blatantly distorting the truth about all this 
They're utterly lying. That's right. And they have no shame in it whatsoever. John Mendel. The video is up there, not at your feet. Pay attention. Put your heart into it. Here is Director Ho. John Mendel, what are you watching? Didn't you hear the director? I'm showing him the Zhao Yuen incident. Hmm. Good. How's it going? Are you getting used to studying here? I'm sure you're aware the government has invested a lot into trying to save you all. Setting up educational courses specifically for Christians like you. You should really treasure this opportunity. If you study hard, You'll be out of here in no time. I'm sure you can see that. You're a sensible man. Following God in a world controlled by the Communist Party will get you absolutely nowhere. The Communist Party is a revolutionary atheist party. It can't ever permit the existence of God or the appearance and work of God. Everyone knows the Communist Party deemed Christianity and Catholicism cults very early on and declared Christian scripture, the Holy Bible, a cult book. This Church of Almighty God of yours makes the claim that the Lord Jesus has returned as Almighty God appearing in China to do the judgment work of the last days. This isn't tolerated. Isn't it natural for the government to suppress and ban it? If Jesus were born in the present age, appearing and working in China, that's all the more reason to have him crucified. No, shot. Ten, even a hundred times. You hadn't thought that part through, had you? For so many years, the Chinese government has suppressed and attacked Christian churches. The goal has always been to build up China as an atheist region to ensure the Communist Party remains in power forever. Look at the propagandic spin given to the May 28th Zhao Yuan incident in Shandong. Everyone needs to know, the government does not allow the Church of Almighty God, as all house churches are banned. Many people found the Zhao Yuan incident to be suspicious, and they suspected that the whole case was engineered by the Communist Party. The CCP, they shifted the blame for a vicious murder case onto the Church of Almighty God. That way, they could build up support from the public to suppress it. Nevertheless, the Chinese court reached a conclusion through public trial, reported by the press all throughout China. This is the best evidence the Communist Party has for declaring you guilty. I believe that this action taken by the government finally will at least have some effect. I agree. Zhang Min Dao, how did you believe the Zhao Yuan incident played out? Perhaps could it be that you too were suspicious? The Shendong Zhao Yuan incident, this big hoax, caused quite a stir. But how many people do you think really trust news reported by the Chinese communist media or agree with the court's rulings? People that understand the CCP are well aware that we live under a dictatorship in which there is no judiciary independence or freedom of the press. Here in China, all of those things are controlled by the government. They are nothing more than a mouthpiece and a tool used by this dictatorship. This is widespread fact. The Shendong Zhao Yuan incident might leave people deceived for a little bit. But when the truth is revealed, what do you think will happen? I saw the trial for the Zhao Yuan incident, 
and there was layer upon layer of inconsistencies. The words of the suspects were, and I quote, I never had contact with the Church of Almighty God. Only I and Zhang Fan represent the true Church of Almighty God. The state is cracking down on the Almighty God Jawei Shen believed in, not the Almighty God we believe in. It's totally evident to me that from their words, they are not people of the Church of Almighty God. They have absolutely no relation to the Church of Almighty God. Why do Chinese communist judges play deaf and dumb and not judge based on fact? Why do they brazenly go against suspect testimonies, intentionally lie and distort the truth, and insist that the suspects were members of the Church of Almighty God? How is it not obvious that the CCP is planting evidence against the Church of Almighty God and attempting to sway public opinion towards persecuting it? Isn't this seen as blatantly unjust? Aren't you lying through your teeth? How could you think that people wouldn't be suspicious? You say that the government intentionally using the Zhao Yuan incident to frame the Church of Almighty God? was done to bias the public and suppress the church? You are entirely correct. If the Communist Party wants to suppress religion and suppress rebellion minorities, it must first sway the public opinion. This is how the Chinese people are going to believe that the Communist Party always acts with integrity. If we don't do that, we won't accomplish anything. Taking that into consideration, can you say the party was wrong to fabricate the Zhao Yuan incident? I saw it as an absolute necessity. From the very beginning, the party's done everything in its power to get ahead. That is the brilliance of the Communist Party. No matter how suspicious people get, it's always of no use. Isn't that life? Director Huh, you said that the Communist Party has always done whatever it takes to achieve its ends. This I've seen with my own two eyes. When the government suppressed the June 4th student movement, as well as the uprisings happening in Xinjiang and Tibet, lies, false claims were created, framing them, spawning rumors to put the blame on them, after which came violent suppression. This is how the Communist Party handles dissent. I don't find it surprising in the least that they would fabricate the Zhao Yuan incident as a way of suppressing the Church of the Almighty God. But can their years of suppression, arrest, and persecution of its members really end up ridding the country of it altogether? Long ago, the Jewish people offended the righteous disposition of God by crucifying the Lord Jesus and were met with curses from God and underwent 2,000 years of subjugation. Because of this, the fact they so wildly opposed God and cruelly persecuted Christians, the Roman Empire was destroyed by plagues from God. These are facts. Don't you know this? The way the Chinese communists resist and condemn God's last day's work, how could they be immune from God's punishments? Almighty God says, we trust that no country or power can stand in the way of what God wishes to achieve. Those that obstruct God's work, resist the word of God, disturb and impair the plan of God, shall ultimately be punished by God. He who defies the work of God shall be sent to hell. Any country that defies the work of God shall be destroyed. Any nation that rises up to oppose the work of God shall be wiped from this earth and shall cease to exist. Shut up! You talk when I say! Captain Hua, please calm down. No more, Almighty God! One more time and this will get dirty. Now behave.
These days, they've forcibly indoctrinated me atheism, materialism, evolution. The more I listen, the more nauseous I become. The more I listen, the more disgusted I am. Clearly, God has spoken the truth and is here to purify man. Yet they turn a blind eye to all of it. They blatantly disregard God's word, denying truth. Now, I've been exposed to the true absurdity and wickedness of an atheist's viewpoint. Here, no one can read the words of God. No praying or worship either. I'm forced to listen. No freedom. I feel so terribly bound and constrained. Being here is like living in a mental hell. It's painful. Days feel like years. No praying. It's so dark here. So evil. They're satanic monsters. So contemptible. So hateful. What I've learned about the government. How wildly they resist God. How cruel they are toward his followers. I have an even more true knowledge of God's greatness and honor. God has humbly hidden himself as a human, not showing off himself at all, only persistently expressing the truth to purify and save man. Faced with attacks, slander, and condemnation by the Chinese Communist government and the Antichrist forces of religious circles, Almighty God has endured extreme humiliation, yet continues working silently. God's love for us is so great and so real. Just as Almighty God says, because the essence of God is holy, that means that only through God can you walk the bright, right road through life. Only through God can you know the meaning of life. Only through God can you live out a real life, possess the truth, know the truth. And only through God can you obtain life from the truth. Only God himself can help you shun evil and deliver you from the harm and control of Satan. Besides God, no one and nothing can save you from the sea of suffering so that you suffer no longer. This is determined by the essence of God. Zhang Mindao, are you ever going to get around to signing this statement of repentance? Fool. Listen. The Communist Party's policy on religion is to have it banned entirely. Eventually, house churches and three self-churches will be two. Everyone must believe in the Communist Party and Marxism-Leninism. If you've got a brain left in there, you'll close ranks with us immediately. Sign the statement of repentance and renounce your connection to the Church of Almighty God. If you don't, you'll be locked up for the rest of your life. When I was arrested, I wasn't expecting to get out alive. If you think you can get me to betray God, you're mistaken. Go to hell! You're hopeless. Keep an eye on him. Starting now, he is not allowed to eat or sleep and will remain standing. When he's come to his senses and signed the statement of repentance, then you can give him food. On your feet, get up. Auntie Han, 
Someone your age should be spending time with their family. Why do you insist on staying here? All you have to do is sign, and you can go on with your faith in private. No one will bother you. You can be with your family, see your grandchildren. Sound nice? Leadership wanted to let you know that we can write the statements for you. You don't have to. You just have to sign. Han Dongmei, you're so stubborn. Just go to jail. If he doesn't sign, he'll be sentenced eight to ten years. Son. Daddy. Oh. Son. Daddy, let's go home. Please. Just sign, please. I'm begging you. You being sentenced will ruin all our lives. If you choose not to sign, you'll be studying with us for a while. If not a month, maybe two. If not two, then three. If it still fails, you'll be sent to a provincial training course for another six months. Only until you sign. Son. God. These Chinese communist demons are still trying to force us to sign the statement of repentance. Blaspheme God and renounce our faith. It's so treacherous, so despicable. I will risk my life to bear witness. I will not sign. Zhong Mingdao, Chu Cheng Guang, Xu Ju Qing, Han Dong Mei, Li Chu Ni, Tan Xiu Ming, Jin Kui Ying, Dong Wei. Zhong Mingdao, come out. Chu Cheng Guang, come out. Han Dong Mei, Li Chu Ni, come on. Hurry. Everyone out. Against the wall. Take them away. Move. If you agree to sign the three statements now, I can still help you. Hmm. Please sign. Take them away.
there are believers and non-believers. Each walks his own path. One cannot sway the other. Marxism, Leninism, and the ways of the Communist Party are supposed to reform those who believe, yet the Communist Party doesn't even believe it themselves. It's inconceivable. Almighty God, your words have led us to victory over Satan's temptations time and time again. I have beheld the power of your words, your omnipotence and wisdom. O oh God, all glory to you. For how many years, thousands of years, has Satan been corrupting man? Brought so much evil, generations, one by one deceived by him. Oh, how many crimes! Horrendous crimes has Satan done throughout this world. Stirred men to fight God, abused, tricked man, sought to ruin God's management plan. Satan walks among things created by God. It cannot, not even slightly, change people or things. Though Satan walks among things created by God, not one thing can it change. Nothing changes under God's command. Under God's command Under the authority of God All things still abide by His rules All living creatures Still submit to Laws that were laid down by God Compared to God's great authority Satan's evil nature is vile Rampant and ugly, despicable So small and so vulnerable Satan walks among things created by God. It cannot, not even slightly, change people or things. Though Satan walks among things created by God, not one thing can it change. Nothing changes under God's command. i 
만들고 